Virginia Crosby. Thank you, Ms. Mouvet. It's always a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. And uh, may I thank the Honourable Member for Abba Conway for calling this important debate. He's an assiduous champion for his constituents. And I'm honoured to follow an excellent speech by my co colleague from Cluid South. My dad had to leave Wales to find work, and I'm determined to bring good quality jobs to Arnest Morn so that our young people do not have to leave their community, they do not have to leave their culture, and they do not have to leave their Welsh language. I'm working hard every day to bring jobs and investment to Arnest Morn, and I've been successful, bringing over £200 million of investment and hundreds of jobs, including £4.8 million for the Holyhead Hydrogen Hub, 45 million for the HMRC Inland Border Facility in Holyhead, and a record 175 million pounds in investment in RAF Valley. But I'm not stopping there. I set up and chaired the Anglesey Freeport Bidding Consortium, and our bid for Anglesey to be a Freeport will be submitted on the 24th of November. And as chair of the Nuclear Delivery Group, I'm determined to bring new nuclear to Wilver. As my colleagues have mentioned, Holyhead is the second busiest row row port in the UK, and Stena is one of the largest employers on the island. Yet, there is only one direct train a day to Holyhead from London. To attract the investment that Honest Morn so desperately needs, I need to be able to offer companies good transport links. Mona Airport has closed, the Menai Bridge is closed for urgent repairs, and the Britannia Bridge is also closed for periods at night for maintenance work. The rail link to the island, particularly the port of Holyhead, is therefore vital. The UK government is committed to levelling up, and that means attracting investment and good quality jobs. I'm so proud that Anglesey is known as Energy Island, with wind, wave, tidal, solar, hydrogen, and hopefully new nuclear. I'm so proud that Bangor University, on my doorstep, has been voted one of the UK's top five universities. Honest Morn is one of the best constituencies in the UK, once you get there. Minister, I need your help. Businesses and people across Anglesey need a reliable and frequent train service to Holyhead. Indeed, Sir Peter Hendy's Union Connectivity Review highlighted the strategic significance of the transport infrastructure across North Wales for the UK through its connections to Northern Ireland and the Republic via Holyhead, the busiest port in Wales and the second busiest row row port in the UK. Avanti West Coast in North Wales has a woeful track record and a woeful reputation, bringing misery to thousands on a daily basis. People who are trying to get to work, people trying to get to school, or people just simply trying to live their lives. Like many others, I was shocked when at the beginning of October, the UK government awarded First Trenitalia West Coast Limited, FTI, a short extension of its current contract to continue to operate the Avanti West Coast contract until the 1st of April 2023. This was incredibly disappointing for me, my colleagues and my constituents who have suffered train services well below par for the past two and a half years. Avanti West Coast is committed to delivering around 90% of their pre-pandemic timetable from the 11th of December, with five direct trains a day from London to Holyhead and four at weekends. Chair, I would like to put it on record that I have no faith that Avanti will be able to deliver this timetable. The issue seems to be an over-reliance on the goodwill of Avanti drivers volunteering to work overtime. Chair, I'd respectfully ask the Minister to join me in meeting with the Avanti train drivers to hear from them directly about their working conditions and why they are not volunteering to work overtime. I'd be happy to facilitate the meeting in Holyhead, where I have my home. I'd also be grateful to hear from the Minister in considerable detail as to how he plans to ensure that the North Wales service will be of an acceptable standard after the 11th of December, so that I can report back to the many, many constituents who've contacted me in frustration on the matter. I would ask that Avanti's performance is closely monitored over the next few months and that no further extension is granted on the 1st of April 2023 unless there is a significant improvement in their services. I will end by saying I believe that Avanti West Coast does not have the capacity or the competence to provide the sort of service that my constituents and those across North Wales expect, and I very much hope the Minister will heed these representations. I have put in for a backbench business debate so that I and my colleagues cross-party can have a proper three-hour debate on the floor of the House, where we can share the frustrations of our constituents and push the Government for assurances that Avanti will deliver the reliable and frequent service our constituents demand and our constituents deserve. Perhaps I can sort of parcel this 
um, response uh, to the Welsh investment uh, and what's being done to invest in Wales and into North Wales. Uh, and also then to talk to the situation with regard to Avanti. Uh, I was asked by my honourable friend, uh, the member for Inismond, to give some detail to that. I hope I can do so uh, with this response. So on Welsh investment, uh, during the current railway investment control period, which covers 2019 to 2024, a record £2 billion will be spent in Wales by network rail. Of this, nearly £1.2 billion will be on renewing and upgrading the infrastructure to meet current and future needs. In addition to this, through the Rail Network Enhancements Pipeline, which I'll be calling RNEP, we continue to deliver ambitious enhancements to the rail network, investing in key priorities with an unrelenting focus on levelling up our nation and ensuring all communities have the connections they need to support growth and prosperity. By way of example, Network Rail is currently finalising an outline business case for upgrading the North Wales main line between Chester and Holyhead and improving journey times between North Wales, northwest of England and other major UK centres. We have this year delivered an upgrade to the digital signalling system on the Cambrian line, supporting the transformation of passenger experience on that line and enabling the operation of state-of-the-art new trains. These trains are currently undergoing testing and will soon be introduced on this line as well as other routes across Wales. We expect to be in a position to publish an update to the RNET pipeline, confirming the status of all enhancement schemes very shortly. My honourable friend has highlighted the findings of Sir Peter Hendy's Union Connectivity Review. The Government is grateful to Sir Peter for his work, and we are considering his 19 recommendations carefully. As Sir Peter has highlighted, in most cases, his report does not contain new detailed infrastructure proposals. Instead, he points the way to further work which should better identify where, when and what to invest in for the best results for the people across the United Kingdom. In anticipation of Sir Peter's recommendations, the Government set aside further funding at Spending Review 2021 to add to the £20 million previously allocated to take forward some of this essential development work. This funding will set us on the right path to developing the best infrastructure investment options to strengthen our main transport arteries for people and businesses across the UK. We have been discussing Sir Peter's recommendations and the opportunities for development funding with the devolved administrations to identify the solutions that work best for the people of the UK. And we are pleased that the Welsh Government agree with Sir Peter's recommendation and we are discussing with them how we can best support his work. Can I also now touch on the impact from HS2 with regards to North Wales? Uh, it was mentioned by, certainly by my right honourable friend, the member for Clwyd uh, South. HS2 will free up capacity on the existing West Coast mainline and enable faster journey times from the rest of Great Britain to both North and South Wales via new interchange opportunities. Journey times from many places in North Wales to London could be reduced to around 2 hours 15 minutes, changing at the crew station. I now turn to Avanti services and the reduction uh, in those services which have been uh, so ably represented by honourable members. I share and recognise this frustration, Ms McVeigh, but I want to be clear about the reasons behind this and the action the Government has taken to mitigate the effects on passengers where possible. It is a long-standing practice for rail operators to use a degree of rest day working to operate the normal timetable. This has been to the mutual benefit of both the companies and staff. It gives companies a degree of flexibility to cover for things such as staff sicknesses and holidays, and it gives staff the opportunity to earn additional money should they wish. Avanti, in common with many other companies both in the rail sector and beyond, experienced a range of difficulties in responding to the pandemic. Each rail operation is unique and these impacts fell differently across them all. In Avanti's case, they included a higher than expected retirement rate, restrictions on training that required two people in a cab and a number of drivers who needed retraining when they returned from an extended period shielding. Approximately 15% of Avanti's driver workforce were unable to work for varying degrees of time during the pandemic due to being clinically extremely vulnerable and requiring partial or full retraining on returning to work. This contributed to a position where the company was relatively dependent on rest day working, as has been pointed out. None of this is to exclude the operator's responsibility to manage its operation effectively, but it is, it is important that we hold them to account for what they are responsible for 
and it is similarly important that we do not seek to hold them to account for matters outside their control. The Department is considering that carefully under the terms of the contract. On the 30th of July this year, Avanti experienced the immediate and near total cessation of drivers volunteering to work passenger trains on rest days. This left Avanti unable to operate its full timetable and facing a choice, whether to try day by day to run what it could with the inevitable short notice cancellations or reduce the timetable to a level operable without overtime. This was a very difficult and invidious choice, but I'm sure that members will appreciate that the impact of short notice cancellations is particularly bad for passengers. It is not possible for passengers to plan around them as they do not know in advance what will be cancelled. So it leads to late journeys and overcrowded trains. And whilst this is bad for anyone, it is particularly bad for passengers who may have booked assistance or may be unable to stand or may be travelling with children, for example. The alternative to reduce the timetable is also highly disruptive and the case has been made. But it is honest with passengers and gives them a chance to try to make alternative plans. This approach has reduced cancellations from around 25% of the service in late July, early August to around 5% today. On the rule, members in this debate have made the point that the impact on North Wales has been particularly severe because the majority of through trains to London have been replaced by a shuttle to Crewe. Avanti has sought to mitigate this by adding more stops at Crewe in its other services to improve the interchange there. But I acknowledge the point they make and the particular impact this has had on passengers travelling to and from North Wales. Uh, I will, of course, give way. Uh, thank you. You're, you're, you're very, very kind. Uh, would the Minister take me up on my offer of coming to Holyhead and having a panad a, 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 and sitting down with the train drivers to hear firsthand um, what these working practices and how they impact them on a, on a daily basis? Thank you. Minister. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I can assure uh, my honourable friend uh, that I had not forgotten that ask, uh, but I will answer it now rather than later on. Uh, I am really keen in my new role to meet as many uh, members of the rail workforce as I can. Uh, and as far across the nation as I can as well. So I will be absolutely delighted to come and join her uh, in Holyhead and meet those drivers uh, and have a look round her constituency uh, and see the impact uh, that she has so ably described. Uh, and I really look forward to having a good, honest conversation with the drivers. I've always worked well with the rail force in my previous role, uh, and I hope I can do so again in my current role. Turning, if I may, to service uh, restoration plans... Um, nearly 100 drivers will have entered service with Avanti between April and December this year, comprising new recruits and those who have completed the required retraining. As they have become available to work, Avanti has started to introduce additional services where they are most needed and where train crew resources allow. So far, these have been focused on London to Birmingham and London to Manchester, but Avanti is planning a further increase in December at the next major timetable change. This will see the majority of direct North Wales services restored, with five trains per day in each direction between Holyhead and London, which I know that members in this room and their constituents will welcome. I want to see Avantis' plan to increase its services succeed, so that passengers travelling to and from North Wales get the experience they deserve. My officials are holding weekly meetings with Avantis senior management, and they are reviewing Avantis' progress against their plan and their handling of the risks. They are reporting to the Secretary of State and also to me as Rail Minister. I've also met with Steve Montgomery, who is the Chief Executive, I should say Managing Director for Rail of First Group, uh, the ultimate parent. The Office of Rail and Road, the Independent Regulator, and Network's Rail, Network Rail's Programme Management Office have both reviewed Avantis plans and they are content. And I hope that independence does give Honourable Members some reassurance. But it's important to be clear that many of these factors are not within Avantis' control. Crucially, this improvement will require the support of the trade unions. It is important that we modernise the railway to phase out old-fashioned ways of working to improve people's journeys, help make trains more reliable and create savings that can provide funding towards a pay rise for staff. Finally, I turn to the contract Avanti has with the Department, which I know has been a matter of interest uh, for many across this House. On the 7th of October, the Department entered into a short-term extension of six months to the 1st of April 2023. This short-term extension will allow the Avanti side of the business to roll out its recovery plan. The Department will consider Avanti's performance whilst officials finalise a national rail contract for consideration.